Hey folks, welcome to our YouTube channel. We have a little special Cedia edition live from the post coverage of the show. And we're here with... Chico Rivera, Vice President of Marketing. Gene, I'm super excited, dude. It's like everything I'm seeing that is being fed to me via email is just great. I mean, we have tons of products. I mean, I'm dying to see if you've been able to listen to any of them. And of course, I want to know if there's any sort of breakthrough that is like the biggest breakthrough in the last 20 years in the auto <laughs> industry. <laughs> well, let me tell you, man, some shit went down at CD this year. I could this, imagine. This was the most exciting CD we had in a couple of years. You know, I, di I didn't go last year, but, you know, our guys went. We, we had an away mission last year. And, uh, you know, they just started doing the Dolby Atmos demos. They were bouncing sound all over the ceilings. This time, we had some real demos. We had some much better demo rooms here with new product announcements. Now we've got the high-end audio companies getting into Atmos and DTS-X. And we got to finally hear DTS-X. It wasn't Vaporware this time. Oh, nice. Nice. I'm interested in hearing about that. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I think maybe what we should do is just cover some of the products and, you know, you, can, you should link up our, our product page, our CDA coverage on Facebook, as well as on the editorial side, because we got a ton of previews coming in right now. Um, we're still posting them, so you could look at Audio Hawks for the next three or four weeks. We're going to just be throwing stuff at you. We're dropping the gauntlet on all the new stuff. Yes, that's what it's all about. Awesome. You know, I, I'll tell you what, Gene, I hear that RBH had, like, the best headphones ever. You know, they floored us because they're a speaker company and just we didn't expect it. You know how they've been dabbling in headphones for the last year or two. They've been doing the little earbuds and they're very impressive. You've heard you heard the EPSBs, the wireless ones. In fact, actually I have I have mine over here at the office. They're like awesome. You know? Yeah, those are the wired versions. Those are great too. Oh man. But they brought out these little uh, these uh, over the ear headphones, closed back headphones, and I'm listening to them, I'm like, Holy crap, these things sound good. They have this beryllium coated driver kind of like, you know, the beryllium material that's in our $50,000 reference speakers. And I'm sitting there listening, and I'm like, these things will floor my $1,200 headphones. And that's not, the, that's not a small thing uh, to beat because those are good headphones too. So I asked, I asked RBH, I go, how much are you guys going to sell these headphones for? You know what the price was? What's that? 200 bucks. No way. 200 bucks for a wired one, and then they have a wireless one. That's around two hundred dollars. It's not quite at the same caliber, but very close in fidelity. Dude, these things can't come soon enough. If you want to talk about the greatest breakthrough, let's say greatest breakthrough in headphone technology in the last twenty years, this is it. I mean, I, I don't. You don't normally see me get that excited. No, you don't. I know, and I know how much you love your twelve hundred dollar headphones. So I mean, I'm like freaking Florida way over here. So big kudos to you guys at RBH. You guys are killing it. Yeah, and, and then they, they basically also demoed their new SV line of speakers. They had the ones with the air motion tweeters, and they were they made out of aluminum. You know, a lot of these air motion tweeters are very dynamically limited. They're the Mylar type. Mm -hmm. These guys took a while to develop an AMT. Actually, they, um, they're using an off-the-shelf one. It's a very high-end one, and they've been testing it and tweaking it. And let me tell you, man, this demo room was just awesome. We'll talk about the demos in a little while. But they had, and you could throw up the video. I, yeah. I did a quick video on my phone. They had their, basically, they took their satellite speaker, which is based on a T2 design. Instead of using six and a half inch mids, they used eight inch mids. Jesus. They used the AMT tweeter sandwiched in between there. And then they had the 1212 sub below that, which gets our extreme basaholic rating. So that place was making your spine rattle. Wow. And the cool thing about it, and um, they also showed their in-wall speakers, their bipole speakers that they use as high channels, and we'll, uh -huh. we'll talk a little bit about more more of that in the demos. And you know, they just had a great they had a great little display area. I didn't expect that many new products coming out of them. That's awesome. So RBH obviously really up the ante when it comes to like the headphones, and obviously they're doing like great great job with earbuds and stuff like that. I mean, they're just they just really seem to be capitalizing in that uh, niche market, you know? Yeah, well, they're going after, you know, the mobile market, which is growing. And hope, hopefully when they do that, then these people will be interested in their high-end speakers as well. Exactly. Exactly. Which is always great, too, also for the uh, kind of uh, audiophile out there that is looking for 
a budget solution for good audio, you know? Not everybody has, unfortunately, the cash to buy, you know, some really nice speakers and stuff like that, you know? Absolutely. And, you know, stay away from the big, you know, the big brands because not all the time do they offer you the best value. That's you right. know, the headphones with the little bees on the side? Mm. I'm sorry, guys. That's just a, a glorified tone control on your ears. <laughs> right. That's awesome. How about some other uh, companies out there, Gene? What else do you see? Well, you know, next to the RBH demo booth, we had Paradigm, Martin Logan, um, you know, at Def Tech. There were some great companies right next to them. Paradigm, of course, showed off their 4F concept speaker. That thing is jacked, man. <laughs> Let me tell you that. That thing's got like uh, one, two, it's like, like four or five really high excursion woofers and they're all like on opposite ends of the internal of the cabinet. Then they've got a beryllium mid and they use the actual, the, the, um, the, um, cover of it is actually used as a face plug and it helps with dispersion, but it also protects the mid range from, uh, you know, prying hands sticking into it. Beryllium tweeter on this thing, active amplifiers for the sub channel it has Anthem arc built in for room correction for the bass frequencies. They don't go frequencies above bass when they do correction, which is great. Right. I didn't get to hear them, but man, they look gorgeous. They didn't demo them yet. They're going to be demoing them probably, you know, at CES or something. And uh, I don't even want to know what the price is. I'm guessing they're the, <laughs> I'm guessing they're the price of a sports car, you know, like a, a, BMW, a BMW 3 Series or something, because they're going to be up there. I tell you what, when when you send me the speakers uh, via the little video that you sent me, I was like, okay, where can I get this? You know what I mean? Because it had like so much technology that I'm like, oh my god, you know. And of course, it's like it's not out there yet, but it's yeah, it was great. I mean, and they they had a bunch of uh, Bluetooth stuff, and you know, they're bringing their A game. You know, they had some really great products, great demo room. We'll talk about the demos again. I was impressed by that speaker, though, man. That thing kind of left me uh, jaw-dropped. <laughs> and then Anthem Anthem kind of hit down hard with the uh, Atmos and the DTS-X. Mm -hmm. They have a whole new processor out, the AVM60, and it's um, it's got DTS-X and Dolby Atmos. They've got two receivers. they got two receivers um, that are Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, and uh, they also have a regular five-channel receiver as well. So they've got all the latest technologies, HDMI, and everything. That's awesome. Wow. Do they have, um, do they have the Atmos implementation? Do they have it like uh, with discrete speakers is what uh, they're doing? Or how, how are they doing it? All the good demo rooms use discrete speakers. That's what I figured. <laughs> okay, perfect. So moving on, so that that's Anthem. What else do you see out there? Uh, Golden Ear uh, showcased their new Super Sub XXL. That sub is jacked up. It is, man. It's got um, two side firing woofers on opposing sides of the cabinet, and then two passive radiators. And the idea of that is it basically balances out all the forces in the cabinet to you know reduce vibrations, reduce resonances. Sandy Gross told me that he could put this thing at full power and balance a nickel on it and it won't fall. Holy cow. <laughs> wow. We're going to have to uh, test some of those and give it a nice uh, baseaholic rating if it stands up, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I'd be interested because it was a pretty big demo room they had, and he had it kind of cranked up, and it was shaking the place really good. Um, I definitely think it would do well in our baseaholics test, and we'll have to take a look at that. Awesome. I think the price of that's around two grand. Okay. And it's a reasonable size, like a mid-sized subwoofer. All right. Interesting. Wow. Uh, you know, I really was impressed with this speaker company called Beale. B-E-A-L-E. Beale. I don't even know <laughs> if I'm saying it right. <laughs> and uh, it was cool. I introduced, I um, interviewed the owner, and he's like, you know, all we need, what we need in this industry is another speaker company, right? right. Like, we need a, like we need a hole in our head, basically. Yeah. <laughs> but they came out with, with a unique design of an in-wall speaker. They used, like, a transmission line enclosure. And you can see the video that we put up. And um, they use this, basically, it's a back box with, like, like, these six little vortex ports that goes around like this all the way up to the speaker. And it's, you know, it's not too deep, maybe about a foot and a half deep. But this little 8-inch sub was kicking it. I just could not believe that they were getting this much bass out of an in-wall 8-inch driver. Interesting. In fact, Teo is going to be doing a review of the whole system. He's got a bunch of in-walls installed because we just were impressed with what we were hearing. Oh, that's nice to hear that. I love companies that come out with, like, innovative ideas, you know. 
because um I mean, you and I both know it's like how many more speakers can we have out there, you know? Yeah, you know, it's great when companies think outside the box. And, yeah. And this is one company that was obviously doing that. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, technology out there from a company that we used to love and revere, Acurus. Mm-hmm. Acurus Aragon, an American company. You know, they were around for, for the 80s, 90s, and all the way up until the last couple of, about 15 years ago. Um they kind of went downhill when they got bought out by Klipsch. Mm-hmm. Now they're back on their own. They're, everything they're doing is made in America. They just introduced the Act 4 processor. It's got DTSX. It's got um, Atmos. And it's got a huge touchscreen color display on the front panel. The cool thing about this, you can actually control the entire product without the remote control just by going up and, and touching on it. Oh, wow. How many Japanese receivers, pretty much all of them, you don't even need to answer that, <laughs> How many of them can you control without the remote control? None of them. Mm-mm. You can't. If you don't have the remote control, you're handicapped. You're crippled. Yes. Other than turning it on and raising the volume and changing an input. If you're stuck in some weird DSP that sounds like a church or you know a German bathtub, you're stuck in that mode until you get the remote control to get it off. And, you know, um, Acurus makes it really easy. Their setup is really easy. I like their speaker assignments. They show you the layouts. I mean, I was just really impressed. A little pricey. It's about eighty five hundred bucks. Okay. So it's definitely for a niche market. Right. But, um, I'm interested in seeing, you know, and testing this thing out and seeing what it does. That's interesting. Very interesting. It just looks like this year there's more innovation than all all the other years, you know. Well, last year Dolby kind of rushed Atmos to the market. You know, everything seemed rushed. And uh, this year, it seems like they're being a little more calculated with the products coming out, mm-hmm. um, especially the DTS-X thing is coming out now, which gives competition. Sure. Um, JBL partnered with Trinov to come out with a processor that's based on the Trinov Altitude processor. It's a 32-channel processor. Mm-hmm. The interesting thing about that is, you know, Trinov is, Trinov is known as a room correction company. Yes. Harman's not using their room correction system. They're using sound field management, which is what they came out with years ago to control the bass, to basically, you know, to set the delays, the levels, and the EQ for all the subwoofer channels because they're big proponents of not correcting above the room transition frequency, which is usually about 300 hertz. Right. So they took Trinov's proven design, which does DTSX, Dolby, you know, Dolby Atmos, and Oro 3D. They took that core design, and then they built their technology on top of it to put sound field management. Nice. It's not going to be cheap. I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know the price, but I'm guessing probably I'm guessing that process is going to be about 20k. I know we're kind of getting ahead, but I looked at the, I looked at your notes and I saw the video and the room they had, the demo room was crazy. It was, yes. and yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, it was something you had to experience, um, but, you know, it was quite loud. Yeah. That was, that was the problem I had with a lot of the demos is these companies tend to play these demos too loud, and it's not enjoyable when it's blowing your ears out. You have sure. to cover your ears. Yeah. Is that the demo that had 32 speakers, I think? Yeah. You know, if you want to talk about the demos, let's just do it. Let's let's start with the JBL Synthesis demo. Yeah. Basically, they, um, they use their M2s, the Master Reference 2, which is – you know, Herald as the most accurate loudspeaker that's currently made by them. They use that as the LCRs. They had eight subwoofers, two per corner. They're 15 inch JBL Pro subs. And they use their sound field management system. All the, I think they had like 10,000 watts of power just for the subs. No bass traps in the room, none. Okay. Meanwhile, every seat that I walked around to had consistently even bass. Okay, and I even talked to Dr. Sean Olive about that. He's like, "There's no need to. There's no need to be using bass traps when you have proper bass management with multiple subs." Like we've always said, you want more efficiency? Don't suck it out with heat. <laughs> They're preaching to the choir, right? <laughs> oh so, yeah, that was proof in the pudding right there. Because out of all the demos I heard, the JBL one had the tightest bottom end. It wasn't necessarily the most extended bottom end that I've heard, but it was tight, tight, tight. And consistent no matter where I, no matter where I sat. They also use their CBT line array of uh, speakers for the side channels. And the cool thing about those kind of technologies is a, a typical speaker in a room will drop 6 dB every doubling of distance. 
-hmm. When you do a CBT line array, it only drops 3 dB, doubling of distance, which means that you can get consistent volume at more seats. Understood. And that's exactly what I heard when I was moving around the room. I still had that immersive surround effect. Now, granted, they have like 32 speakers. Mm -hmm. So when you have that many speakers in a room, it's kind of hard not to have a sonic a good sonic immersive bubble no matter where you sit. Right. That was a huge advantage. I think that room was probably close to a million dollars worth of equipment. It was crazy. Jeez. And they did, you know, they did three demos. They had, um, they started out with Oro, which was actually my least favorite demo out of all the demos they did. They played some, uh, like, orchestral music, a concert. It sounded a little bit harsh to me. It wasn't, it just didn't sound right. I don't know if it was because they had all this, the height channels in the ceiling and Oro kind of wants you to have a height layer instead. But that one, it sounded okay, but it did not blow me away. Then they did, um, they did like a Divergent. You know the Divergent movie yes. where the, girl, the girl's in the glass and she's trying to escape and, you know, mm -hmm. she doesn't know if it's a dream or not. That was very immersive, although it was too loud. And when the glass exploded, I'm, I'm sitting there kind of covering my oh, ears. Your ears, yeah. But what really won me over in that demo was that DTS-X demo that they did. Um it's a it was a song called Symantics by Nigel Stanford. Okay. And it used sound waves to bend water and to make shapes and stuff like that. That was like just amazing. I mean they played the full song and I was like, Holy cow, you don't even realize that demo was like twenty minutes long. Wow. And the whole demo itself and it just it flew by. Really? Nice. So it that was like cool it was demo. pretty epic. It was definitely epic. It was the most impressive room that we saw at the trade show period and there were other guys with expensive rooms like steinway lined off and i'm not a big fan to be honest with you last last time i went to one of their demos they had the level so loud that i was holding my ears the whole time as well as my wife and it was just brash sounding it was not pleasant we walked out so <laughs> yeah. you're not going to hear this anywhere else you're not going to hear people complaining about demos but we're i'm telling you like it is i'm telling you what was good and what wasn't and I'm not saying the equipment was bad. I'm just saying the demo was bad. Right, right. Yeah. Loud doesn't necessarily mean better. We know this. I mean, you know. No, you got you gotta you gotta be realistic. I mean, yeah. You be listening at these levels. I mean, you, you want to protect your hearing so you listen for a lifetime. You know. Exactly. Speaking of loud, I, probably the most offensive demo at the show was Oro. Really. They had uh, PMC speakers, and all they did was brag about that the fact that they were hitting 107 dB peaks at the listening area. That's and that's damaging. 100 dB sustained levels with 107 dB peaks, and that's using a, an SPL meter, so you know it's not fast responding. It was probably even louder than that. So their sales proposition is more volume is better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Over 107 dB is basically sustained because you can't really measure peaks quickly enough on an SPL meter. Sure. So our guys left. They, they they spent maybe a minute or two in there and they just couldn't handle the sound pressure. So that was that was like a car like so you remember those car audio guys yeah. where they crank the snot out of their systems and they have to leave the car <laughs> yeah. otherwise they'll they'll stop their heart. <laughs> Who wants to sit in a demo like that? I'm sorry, that's kind of dumb, dude. <laughs> so. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, whatever. More is not necessarily better. We've covered this before. I mean, quantity, it's not uh, necessarily better than quality. Well, yeah. speaking of speaking of less is more, RBH was bold in their Atmos demo. They only used seven main speakers, two high channels, not four, and two subs. And the cool thing about that is they used a bipole in-wall speaker, the SI-744s, they put a kind of mid wall in the ceiling, yeah, a midpoint of the room in the ceiling. And let me tell you, man, Shane was like, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but let me try it out. It was brilliant because it had two, two pairs of drivers on each side of the cabinet firing at different angles. And it gave you a very wide bubble of surround, of surround immersion with only two speakers. And they had it dialed in. They used the Datasat processor, very yeah. impressive Atmos DTSX processor. Never even heard of the company until uh, I saw this demo. Another expensive processor. I think that thing is close to 20 grand as well. <laughs> 16 channels or something like that. But they have the full implementation of, of um, DRAC, and it's done correctly. Shane actually played around with DRAC, and he got favorable results with it. And um, it was a great demo. They started out, they played, um, what did they play first? Oh, they played that uh, new Mad Max movie. Uh-huh where the guy uh, basically eats a lizard. 
<laughs> it's actually they before that they played Unbroken, which I've never seen. Mm-hmm. And basically, I've seen I've seen the opening of Unbroken. I probably saw it about ten times at Cedia. So I finally came home and had to watch it. <laughs> Good movie. Unbroken was awesome in that room. The the immersion I got the the envelope of sound, the bass out of those out of those twelve twelve subs was just incredible, incredibly deep and extended. You know, it was loud, but it wasn't ear piercing. Not one time did I have to cover my ears in that demo. Yeah, which was which was a relief. That's quality. You know, they're selling yeah. quality. And it's not trying to just blast you out to, to impress you. It's trying to say, hey, look, this is realistic levels that you'll listen to, and this, you know, see if you enjoy it. That was one of the best demos at the show. I really enjoyed that demo, and, and I wasn't the only one that thought that way. That's awesome. Well, kudos to Shane. I mean, the guy's a genius. So Yeah, good guys over there. Uh, Martin Logan put on a great demo. They use their Edge in-wall products. Beautiful room. They just use, like, all this wood paneling to put the speakers in. They had the two Balance Force 212 subwoofers. I love those subs. Tight, 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 deep, deep, deep. Uh, great demo again. They played the same kind of stuff. They played. Um, oh, they also played. In addition to playing uh, Mad Max and playing um, Unbroken. Unbroken, they also played the new Star Wars Battlefront. Really? Let oh me tell God. you, man, a video game in Atmos, and that looks. It almost makes me want to get rid of my old Xbox 360 and get an Xbox One. Especially at the end when Luke is looking up, and all of a sudden you see Darth Vader. It makes you forget how catabolic that Anakin was in the last three movies. <laughs> it really does. I forgot like those movies even existed and Jar Jar was like in another planet or something. <laughs> I hear you 100%. <laughs> We've had several discussions about this. <laughs> yes. So that, that was – Martin Logan put on a really nice demo. Right next to them was Paradigm. Very similar. Both of them used 7.2.4. So they had in-ceiling speakers, no bouncy house. Yeah. <laughs> no comment. I'm trying to be good, dude. Yeah, I'm trying as well. Not too hard, but trying. But the, the Paradigm demo was great. I, you know, they used Anthem Electronics to demonstrate the Atmos and and um, and uh, DTSX. I believe they had some DTSX going. Same kind of scenes. They played it a little louder than Martin Logan, but it was super clear. I mean, I heard some details in the Paradigm demos with the same source material that I didn't quite hear as distinctly with Martin Logan. Okay. Wow. So both were really good. I really had no problems with uh, either of those demos. I didn't go to the Triad demo, but our guys did. And Triad put on, they were debuting their silver uh, series speakers with the um, Atmos upfiring drivers. Uh-huh. And they had they had a ridiculous amount of subs. I think they started out with four subs, but it was a 15,000 cubic foot room. So they wound up putting 12 of their 12-inch subs to fill the room. Holy cow. They had Jerry LeMay of HAA to calibrate it, which he's actually a, you know, a very competent acoustician. But the problem with that demo was – I had two problems with that demo from what I heard. Number one is they, they used wood blocks above the Atmos speakers to bounce the sound towards the listening area. Oh but in, re- <laughs> in reality, it only bounced about two feet in front of the speaker and it missed all the seats. <laughs> so there was no immersion effect to be heard. Right. And then to pour salt on that wound, the guys at Triad were actually telling people that were coming in, you can't just use any in-ceiling speaker for Atmos. It has to be certified. It has to be Dolby certified. We've been working with Dolby since day one, and they use our speakers in their demo rooms. And the only way to get the immersive effect is with an Atmos certified speaker, particularly the bouncy house kinds. (laughs) Now, Now, if that was true... Don't you think that that demo would have been more convincing than what JBL did or what RBH did or what Paradigm or Martin Logan did? No. There's, there's a reason all those companies were using discrete speakers, okay? You know, you could get a good look at a T-bone if you stick your head up a cow's ass, but I just <laughs> take the butcher's word on it. <laughs> and you know what? If you want to bounce sound and you want to put speakers on a stand, they should use our, our patented idea. You know, our patent pending idea, go ahead and make it like twist, you know. <laughs> the rotating sprinkler. The, the rotating sprinkler quintesson idea that we had over here. You know, <laughs> I can just see it now. We're, we're going to be a bull. I'm going to be a bullseye because people are already upset of, of how vocal I am about the Atmos reflection speakers. <laughs> but I have not sat in a demo with these speakers that have convinced me that they're discrete speakers coming from above. Even Klipsch. 
you know, I talked to Klipsch. They had a demo going. Their demo was blowing the show, the whole floor out, out of the water. I mean, it was like out in the middle, super loud, super, super loud. They had these giant towers, right? The one thing I'll give them is they weren't even using the towers. They were actually using their in-wall speakers to get these kind of SPLs. With, and I think they had 15-inch subs, which were shaking the place. Then they had their bouncy speakers they just came out with. But at least they're not using a little three-inch paper cone driver. They're actually using their horn that controls dispersion, and it has the efficiency to keep up with their main speakers. So if anyone is going to do a bouncy speaker right, they probably have the best example of it. The problem is I couldn't really sit there and listen to it because I couldn't handle how loud it was. Mm. So I'd have to take those speakers and actually bring them in and do a test. But there's another guy. They're basically claiming everybody that makes these upfire speakers are basically claiming it's better than a discrete speaker. I just find that really bizarre that to make those kind of statements. I really don't understand. What the I... physics don't agree. <laughs> no. <laughs> at, least on, at least on our world. <laughs> I don't know what world they're coming from, but uh, obviously a different parallel dimension where they obviously work, and you and I are just out of that dimension. That's the yeah, I think, I think we took the blue pill and everyone else took the red pill or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's I don't the bottom know. line. <laughs> and then, you know, Golden Ear also did a demo. They, they actually used all in-ceiling speakers, even for Atmos, which was a little strange, but he wanted... Sandy wanted a proof of concept that you could do an entire surround system with in-ceiling speakers. Okay. And it sounded good. It just didn't give you that immersive bubble because all the speakers were on the same listening plane. I mean, you can't, you cannot change the laws of physics. <laughs> but his sub was awesome, but it was turned up way too loud. Okay. It was like a, it was like a car stereo. That's how loud it was. Oh. <laughs> I told the guys outside, I'm like, you guys needed to turn that sub down like six or maybe even 10 dB to really get balanced sound. And they're like, yeah, you know, we do have it at the right level. And then he keeps goosing it up to show off the sub. And I can understand it's his baby. It's a very impressive product. But if you want to give an accurate portrayal of what you're doing here, balance the sound out. It's important not to do too much with the whiz-bang effects. Yeah, we've talked about that in other videos, you know. You don't want to just go ahead and sell the concept of a boombox, so to speak. You know what I mean? Just yeah. I agree. It's good for teenagers, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we have uh, more refined listening taste. <laughs> it comes yeah. out of that. So. so, you know, it was cool because we finally got to hear DTSX. Oh, Denon also put on a DTSX demo with their Marantz uh, products. I'm sorry. Yeah, Denon was there with Marantz, but they actually used a Denon receiver. It was like a prototype receiver, huh? but they use it as a pre-out only. Okay. I think it was the I think it was the seventy two hundred. It was like the, the beta version, and then they used some Marantz power amps, um, and they used Snell speakers. Believe it or not, Snell's out of business. It's their company, but you know, D and M doesn't make a better speaker than what Snell used to make for them. So it's cool, pretty cool that they used and they used discrete speakers in the ceiling. Nice, nice. So they, they know what's up. Yeah, <laughs> the guys that really know what's up know, you know. Yeah, I mean, I did not say more. Yeah. I just don't think it's white business to get into the bouncy speaker business, if you ask me. I think it's okay if you can't, if you don't have the option to put discrete speakers. I think then that's your last resort. Sure. Then, then it could be better than nothing. But let's um, let's not promise the moon and deliver cheese. Bottom line. <laughs> All right, guys. I think at this point you should showcase the videos that I did. You know, I did them on my phone. They're not high quality. It's not high def. It's not ultra HD. It's not an Atmos. It was something quick and dirty to do to give you guys some teasers of, of the stuff that we saw. So please don't crucify us in the thread below. Be gentle. <laughs> With that said, let's go ahead and put this video. So let's let it rip. Nick. Hey. We're here with Nick Plattis, the product manager of Anthem, and uh, we want to talk about your new Atmos receivers. Fire away. So let's take a look at these guys. We have three models or two models that are Atmos? Three receivers and then the pre -pro. Okay, so what's the seven channel receiver? Is this the seven channel? It's That's seven channels of amplification, 11 channels of decoding and pre-outs. Okay, so basically guys, it's a seven channel internal amplifiers, but there's pre-outs so you can do a full 11 channel system, which is 7.1.4. Then we have the 11 channel model, it's the MX, MRX 1120. Now this has 11 internal amplifiers in it, right? Correct. So guys, one box solution, a full 7.1.4. It actually has two subwoofer outputs. 
They're in parallel, it's there for convenience. Okay. Also has the Anthem Arc. Now, do we know the prices of these? Can you tell us the price of the MRX 720 and the 1120? The 1120 is $34.99, the 720 is $24.99, and then we have the 520 at $13.99. Okay, now the 520 is not Atlas, it's just the five channels. That's right, you need seven channels to start talking about Atlas. Gotcha. Let's take a look at the back. Look at all these connections. Is it HDMI 2.0? Yes, and HTCP 2.2 and 18 gigabits per second. 18 so it'll gigabits do 4K per second. 60 at its uh, highest format. So it's full UHD capable. Yes. Okay. All right, guys, that's that. Guys, we're here with Mark Tchaikovsky of Beal Audio. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, all Audioholics? We're doing awesome. <laughs> We're here at your booth. Yeah. Tell us what makes you different, because there are how many speaker companies? That's, that's like my running four? joke. Beale Street Audio, loudspeakers. My running joke is like, we make loudspeakers because we all know there's a shortage of them. So it's actually the opposite. But we do something very special and something very different that's not marketing and smoking mirrors. We've developed a technology called Sonic Vortex. Sonic Vortex is based on a technology called Porter Transmission Line. Let me give you a, uh, an example. This is what our speaker enclosure looks like. And notice I'm saying enclosure, not back box. Correct. So he just took a picture of the speakers up there that we have installed here at the show. But I'm going to show you this break apart unit. If I take the bottom off, you're going to see something very different in this. This is where the single port that is typically found in a speaker will begin. But as you see those swirls, we call them fins, it breaks that single port into six different ports. And it goes around the perimeter of the enclosure that we make. This is how a single transmission port, a port transmission line works. We just make it six, and I'll put this down and show you the rest of it. As this goes through, whoa, it's okay. Uh-oh, that one got away from goes, you. goes through the cabinet, all these ports continue around the perimeter, and I'll turn this around the other way, and they come out at the top at six different places. This is something you really need to hear to appreciate, but the bass out of these speakers, especially for the size, is more than you would ever imagine. Well, you get some additional benefits. You also get a very broad dispersion pattern. You get off-axis clarity but you get a consistent sound every single time with our speakers because of the enclosure. The, most of the architectural speakers in the market use an open back, and that design is fine, but the inherent issue with that, which without knocking any of the competition, because there's fantastic speakers out there, is that it depends on the ceiling cavity. If you have a different size ceiling cavity, a pitch of a roof, it can make the speaker sound very different. Plus, with an open back design, you can get debris inside the speaker, it can bleed into the room above or to the next room uh, next door if it's an in-wall version. Where these, you have none of those issues in addition to the higher performance you get at a Sonic Vortex. So, uh, you know, come see us on the website. It's uh, Get Beal, which is B-E-A-L-E, -E, like Beale Street in Memphis, which is where we're based, dot com. So getbeal.com. Give us a visit. Give us a call. Check our stuff out. And I appreciate you guys uh, coming by to see us. No problem. And guys, just to let you know, we heard a little demo at their booth, and it was pretty amazing the amount of bass that was coming out of this little box. And as a result, because we were so impressed, we ordered a boatload of your speakers. We installed by Theo. We installed by by Theo, actually. Theo, sorry. And he's going to be doing a review, and he's going to be using these speakers in an immersive surround. 16 or 16, like I think. With in subs in the ceiling as well. Correct. So, guys, stay tuned for our coverage of these speakers, and uh, we'll tell you more as things progress. Thanks for having me. No problem. Hey guys, we're here with our own Cliff Hain, and we're at the Denon booth, and we're looking at Heos Audio. 32 channels of Heos Audio. Cliff, tell us what Heos is. This is pretty cool. So Denon makes a wireless multi-room system that they've dubbed Heos, or if you're in the UK and hear somebody say it, it's Heos. And right here, they're showing off the newest products in the lineup. We did a preview on this a few months back, and this is called their Drive. It addresses, I think, I gave it a gotta have it rating on the preview article, because there's not much else like it on the market. It's four zones of audio in one box. You can link them all together to make a total of 32. It's hardwired, you can hook USB up. There's pre-outs if you want to run zones to an existing amplifier. It works with their wireless speakers, with their other wireless amps, wireless preamps. 
it's it's a pretty cool product and there's a lot of other competitors on the market that make wireless multi-ear music systems but nobody really has a four zone amplifier like this so it fits a niche and uh it seems to be working great here so basically you gang up to eight of them together to get yeah the you can channels. flip around back here and here it is each zone has its own trigger output to run another amplifier. It has a USB input, a pre-out, a line in. All of these inputs are zone agnostic, so I could run an optical into one of them, and I can share it out anywhere in the home. Rack mountable, it retails for 2,500 bucks, and um, I talked to them, they said it's been selling like hotcakes for now. Let me tell you, Cliff, you know, you're a custom installer yourself. You gotta give props to the guys that put this together. Look at the wire management here. Yeah, you're not kidding. This you is wire managed beautifully. This is much different than my system. <laughs> it's like a spaghetti monster. It looks really good, except for here, all the wire goes nowhere, huh? Uh -oh. <laughs> Virtual. Somebody cut it. Awesome, guys. Check it out. Check out our preview article and check out our, in the future, we'll be doing a review of this. Thanks, Cliff. Thank you. Hey guys, we are here with Sandy Gross, the Sandy Gross of Golden Ear Speakers. Sandy, how you doing today? We're doing great. We're here, we're introducing our new Super Sub XXL. Okay. This is a new product we'll be shipping in three weeks. The Super Sub XXL has unique pen tending technology. It's got inertial balancing in two planes, both laterally and vertically. This has never been done before and it yields tremendous sonic benefits. Much cleaner sound, lowers distortion. It's got two 12-inch active drivers, two passive radiators, passives top and bottom. That's, somebody's and gotta do it's it. It's got a 1600 watt digital amplifier, as well as a very complex DSP to control everything. Excellent. We're showing it, we're shipping it, it's 1999, and it's really quite, quite an amazing piece. Uh, the response has been tremendous. We're actually able to stand the nickel on its side on it at full power and the nickel doesn't fall over, which is really pretty cool. That's because the cabinet doesn't move at all. Great, so you got a very inert cabinet here. We heard the demo, you had all in-ceiling Atmos speakers. Yes. I walked in thinking I was listening to the Tritons and I got fooled. That's the idea, that's why the Tritons are sitting there. That was awesome and the whole room was shaking, so it's obviously this thing's got a lot of output. Yep, and clean and deep. Excellent, man, we want to review this. So put us on the list. Okay. All right, thanks, Sandy. Thank you. We're here with Jim Garrett, Director of Product Management and Marketing over at Harman, and we're in the JBL Synthesis booth, demo booth here. We're going to be demoing an M2 system. Jim, why don't you tell us real quick about this system? Yeah, so we're just getting ready to start a demo in this theater here at Cedia. This Sorry is guys, a that's the exit. JBL Synthesis SDP75. It's a global partnership that we've announced with Trenoff. We're using that as the head of the system in here. Our award-winning SDA amplifiers featuring our Blue Link technology, our SDEC EQ technology. This is a 13.4.11 channel system that's featured in this room. Behind the screen, we are using our M2 loudspeaker as an LCR. We're running around the sides and back of the room, we're using the CBT50 as a side surround. And over our head, there are 11 of our SCS uh, coaxial speakers that are being used on the top. So we literally have like 32 speakers in this room, and you can't see one speaker when you look correct. around. There are no visible speakers in here. Uh, there are eight 15 inch subwoofers featured in this room. We're using Harman's proprietary sound field management technology to do those. There are two 15s located in each corner of the room with about 10,000 watts of amplifier power. Yikes, 1.21 gigawatts, guys. I think you're going to like this demo. So. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Get ready for your teeth to explode, Cliff. Here in the Martin Logan demo, 7.2.4 Atmos demo, and we have Sean. Hello. Sean, what are the name of these speakers? So what we're going to be using uh, for the demo are the Access, uh, excuse me, Edge. Edge. I'm assuming you can edit that. Uh, Edge speakers along with the Axis for the center channel and the rear surrounds. We also have four Electromotion R speakers and two of the Balance Force 212 subwoofers. Oh man, let me tell you something guys. These Balance Force subwoofers are a force to be reckoned with. And we are gonna sit down and take a listen and see if we get blown away. And we got Cliff here, we got Tony, and we got a red shirt in the back. So.
We're the only ones not to survive. Yeah, this is right. careful the red shirt. Hey guys, we are here at the Paradigm booth with the lovely Aaron Phillips. Say hello. And this new Paradigm Concept 4F speaker. Now, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong. This is like the flagship for Paradigm, right? At the moment, this is an engineering concept. So we basically let our engineers loose and said, show us what you got. This is what they came up with. Um, it's at this stage a concept, so we don't have a price. We don't have an availability date. All I would we can say is kind of the direction we're going with our engineering. I design. would guess that the price of the speaker is going to be the cost of like a 3 Series BMW. <laughs> Can't say for sure yet. I'd love to give you more detail, but we're so early in the stages. This was hand-built. There's three of them in the world. So at this stage, we have uh, no information on price. Beautiful. Um, just a lot of technology. Well, I noticed that the, the, the woofers here, they are. there's like four woofers in here. That's correct. Two front port firing, two back firing. And it's an active woofer, so it's, That's it's amplified. It's a hybrid, so the bottom bottom end is fully powered, 700 watts for the front, 700 watts for the back, and the top is passive, pure beryllium mid-range as well as pure beryllium tweeters. Guys, pure beryllium mid-range and tweeters, that gives you a really smooth response. This little um, grill here acts as a waveguide, That's right? Correct. It's, it's actually PPA functional That's to, right. to give better off-axis performance of the drivers. As well as a face plug, and it also protects your, your beryllium uh, tweeter and mid-range. That way fingers. you don't get little kids poking. That's right. That would be a very expensive one to replace. That would be. So let's take a look at the back real quick. This thing's a beauty, guys. I mean, uh, you know, this video can only do so much justice here. There's all your controls. It also has Anthem Arc. That's correct. Or Paradigm it, Arc, it whatever you want. With, well, it doesn't ship with anything, but it includes Arc in the speaker itself. Um, so you can actually Arc your bottom end. And awesome, guys. You know, we're going to be checking these out one of these days in the near future. But I probably need some of you guys to help me lift them into our room because they probably weigh about 300 pounds. They, they're up there for sure. Excellent. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Gene. We're here at the Pioneer booth with Rolf, and he's going to explain to us a bit of the Pioneer digital audio players. Hi, I'm Rolf Hawkins with Pioneer Home Audio. This is our new XDP100R portable digital audio player. This will probably be coming out around the end of January next year at a street price of around $700. It's based on the Google Android app operating system, so it's got the latest Lollipop 511 operating system on board. So extremely flexible and compatible with any of the Google Play Store apps that you might have and want to download on this. It has wireless and Bluetooth with AppTax technology built in. With wireless, not only B, G, and N, but also A, C connectivity as well. So if you want to stream high-resolution audio files over a wireless network, it's definitely the way to go with this device. It has an internal 32 gigabytes of memory, as well as the additional option of adding SD microcard slots on the side, which can hold 128 gigabytes each. So lots and lots of space for all of your high-res music audio files. And again, because it's Android, you can put Tidal, Spotify, Deezer, any of the music streaming apps that you like and enjoy, usually on this device as well. So this is a very, very flexible device, very, very high quality ESS Saber DAX on board for the headphone end. So this is a true audiophile performance product that we've been getting some phenomenal feedback from the two-channel audiophile market out there already. So thanks for watching. I'm Rolf Hawkins with Pioneer Home Audio. Hey guys, we are in the RBH demo booth here with Shane Rich, Technical Director of RBH. How you doing, Shane? Doing great, Gene. Good to have you here. Thank you for having us. So what do you got here, man? You got these like new flagship towers or something, right? Yes. This is uh, the new SV uh, series product, and this is the flagship tower in the SV series. Uh, it's the 831. Uh, which is the satellite on top and the SX or pardon me the SV1212 on the bottom it's essentially a iteration of the SX1212 which you'd reviewed that had uh, such high praise given it did it, it got our extreme base aholic rating that's right and so it's been uh, just massaged a little bit uh, so that uh, the size of it would accommodate the satellite speaker up top so it's a little bit shorter than the SX1212, but it's also a little bit deeper, so it maintains essentially the same volume, uh, but again, just uh, uh, size so that we'll accommodate that, 
that satellite up top. Now this, these are eight-inch drivers, right? These aren't yeah, the these sixes. These are eight-inch. So this is this is new with eight-inch driver, three eighths versus the four six and a halfs that we had in our T1. Uh, we're also using uh, AMT tweeter, aluminum uh, diaphragm AMT tweeter. So all aluminum drivers in the system. And so now Shane, you're doing a seven point two. Point two yeah, with that Atmos. Atmos demo. Uh -huh. What are you using for the in ceiling speakers? So the in ceiling speakers are SI seven forty fours, and uh, a little bit hard to see. Hard to up see. On the ceiling with the black. But, yeah. Um, yeah, those are real effective as a, an Atmos speaker for uh, the VOG channel, as they call Voice it. of God. That's right. Now it's crazy, guys. They're using SX sixty three hundreds. Uh-huh, yes. SX-6300, I'm sorry, 8300s for the back channels. Yeah. I mean, these are better than, you know, most people's front channels, but they're just going full out here, guys, with these flagship towers here. And for Atmos, they're using a Datasat processor. This is some heavy heavy gear, guys. This is uh, state-of-the-art here, Oppo Blu-ray player. RS20, uh, and this has the Dirac uh, room correction room correction built in, which I've been really pleased with uh, the little bit of time we were able to spend with it setting up here. So excellent, it's doing a great job. Well, we're going to sit down and take a listen, and we'll let you know how it is. Thanks, Shane. Thank you, Gene. Here with Jim Garrett again. Jim, we had a great demo with the synthesis over there. But tell me something: is this Performer Three? No, this is the new Revel Concerta 2 series. So this is a complete new product line. Should be in stores just right before the Thanksgiving holiday. Just began production on it. So this is a ground up redesign of the entry level series from our Revel brand. So we've taken technologies inspired from the award winning Performa 3 series and brought them down to what we feel is a value combination of style and performance that's unbeatable at the price points we have. So you can see in the cosmetic, this is where we really wanted to up our game on these products. So we've got curved wood enclosures on these, we've got high gloss painted finishes, no visible fasteners on them, magnetically attached grills, so it's a very clean, very contemporary looking product. Transducer technology, all Revel DNA, we've got our patented waveguide technology, metal dome, tweeter, metal cone woofers in here. We're looking at the real 10 subwoofer right now, 10 inch, 800 watt, class D amplifier real 10, single band EEQ. That is a $1,500 subwoofer. The towers we have, we've changed from three way design to a two and a half way design, which we did knowing at this price point that a lot of guys were going to use these with AVRs or lower powered amplifiers. And we wanted to bump up the uh, sensitivity of these, so they're very un like in that respect. So the F36, the large one, is 91 dB. The little guy, the F35, has 90. So that two and a half way design, of course, gives us more cone area for greater output. So we've optimized all these drivers for low distortion, so we still get that best in class Revel sound quality. These go through the double blind listening test in the Northridge facility uh, to prove that very fact as well. So. so Give me the price on these guys. This is the F35, the smaller of the two. It's a triple five and a quarter inch. These are 1600 a pair. To the left, we have the F36, which is a triple six and a half. This is the big daddy of the range at 2000 a pair. Wow. If you need a smaller form factor, we have two compact monitor speakers. So the M16 is a $900 a pair traditional bookshelf speaker, and it has a, a sibling that is also a double six and a half inch, but in a much thinner enclosure. So this can be wall mounted as an LCR, it can be used as a surround speaker. It's got a great keyhole mounting system on the back. This is a monopole. Correct? It's a monopole, correct. So we don't refer to this as a surround speaker despite its S16 model number where you really want people to use these as an LCR or a main channel speaker as much as they're using them as a surround speaker. Okay. When you look at this speaker as we've got demonstrated in the other room in the white finish, it looks really great on the wall. So you're basically hitting the internet direct price points. Absolutely. You're giving them a run for their money yeah, with these. Absolutely. Like I say, I think this from a style and a performance standpoint is really outdoes the price point for it.
Okay, Jim, where we would surely want to get some of these for sample for review after the show. Okay? Absolutely, yeah, we definitely want you to check them out. All right, guys, thank you. Gene, the videos look freaking awesome, man. Thank you so much for taking those. I mean, it give us a pretty good idea of what was going on in the show floor. I mean, for all those uh, viewers that were not able to attend Syria, at least they got a little bit of what was going on at Syria, thanks to your uh, cool videos over there. So I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, it was it was a sneak peek, and I'll tell you this much: we're excited because we've lined up a lot of reviews this year. Actually, I should say for next year, because by the time this stuff starts coming in, it's going to be Christmas or later. Mm -hmm. But uh, it seems like the industry's got a little uh, adrenaline shot going in it right now. I think things are picking up. People are being optimistic. We uh, we met the CEO, the new CEO of Cedia. It's just um, it's an exciting time. It was a good venue. It was one of the best shows we've had in a, in many years. I'm pretty excited. It looks like innovation is up. That's what we're all about. We like to see innovative ideas. We like to see different things, you know. And uh, it looks like Syria this year was jam-packed with that. So that's uh, that's exciting. So I look forward to this uh, coming year uh, for the audio industry. It should be pretty good. Absolutely. Awesome, Jim. So with that said, you know, I'm just going to invite our people to just uh, click like below. Let us know what uh, they think of the videos. Comment. Let us know if you were at Syria, you know, what do you like? And if you were not there, then based on what you've read and what you've seen, you know, what is it that uh, piqued your attention the most? You know, we're dying to go ahead and see your comments. Excellent. With that said, until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.